Wow, at this moment right now, all of us all over the world are just joining in in this one little hub and um, sharing energy, which is really, really awesome. Before we get started, um, there's a chance we might post this on YouTube. We've been talking about it. Maybe yes, yes, no, maybe yes, we don't, we'll see. But if we do, and if you are watching this on YouTube, this is our monthly beautiful live stream that we hold with our community on Boho Beautiful Official. And so if you'd like to join one of these conversations or live streams, you can always uh, click the link in the description here and try out our Boho Beautiful Official app and streaming platform. BohoBeautiful.tv Boho Beautiful TV. Boho Beautiful TV. Tons of exclusive <laughs> content, uh, tons of series, all kinds of stuff we don't have on YouTube. But even better than that is a community of amazing people that are joining us live right here. I'm going to monitor the comments. Yes. And um, and it's always wonderful every time we start these live streams is that everybody joins into the live stream room, I guess, whatever you'd call it. Um, and they say where they're from. And it's so cool because you just start reading everybody's locations and you're like wow at this moment right now all of us all over the world are just joining in in this one little hub and um, sharing energy which is really really awesome it's a mm -hmm. beautiful intention yeah so hi everybody <laughs> that are here we thank are, you for joining us today we're here in barbados still we're still in barbados we have uh really liked it here actually the island is really really chill and actually something that i think both of us really needed uh, this year, you know, we started out January feeling really burnt out and low on energy and coming to a place that is very peaceful and allowed us to kind of get into our own rhythm um, has been really, really beneficial. And now we've actually picked up shooting a lot of content. Um, oh. We spent the last two days, actually. My, my mom ended up coming here to look after Xavier because we decided to have really long shoot days. And I don't really want to have a nanny the whole day kind of thing. So I'd rather leave him with grandma. But we've been leaving like, we've been doing what? Like eight till five yeah. every day. But like in the heat, in the sun oh, here, in the I'm, beaches. and It's so pink. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Because <laughs> we're just out on the beach. just like and for the beaches here, are, you know, the ones that we can find that don't have too much of the seaweed in them are beautiful. But they don't have much shade. So yeah. you're literally like in the the direct sunlight for yeah. so long so the seaweed is insane the sargassum Guys, did yeah. you know that there is a, a blob they call it of seaweed mm -hmm. two type two times the width of the united states continental landmass coming from africa over to mexico and the caribbean because of human impact and corporate malfeasance pretty much i guess mm -hmm. or maybe poor hindsight as to what would happen from all of the fertilizer runoff um and it's killing the ocean at record amounts of uh, ocean acidification and dead zones and I've never felt so helpless. I it's so sad. I actually put something up on our Instagram on I don't know, it's our boy Xavian running out onto the beach. And, and kind of like stopping. And he sees the seaweed and stops and there's this moment. I put nine inch nails hurt to it which amplified the emotion but then he looks down at the seaweed and it's just like it's crushing you guys because that's the world our children are going to know and I don't know what to do about it. Um, and so I didn't mean to get all serious right out the gate, um, but it is sad because you know we even talked about like some of the beaches we found here, and I always say like, can you imagine what this place was like when there wasn't seaweed? Because these beaches are unbelievable, but right now, especially the ones on the east coast, they're literally like there's so much sargasm, which is like like brown seaweed. Is that what it's called? Sargasm. Yeah. See, I don't even know this. Wow. That um, you can't see the the actual Some of the, sand like it's, it's like a covered. snowfall yeah it's like literally like up to your knee and then the, it's also in the water so like even yesterday after we finished a long shoot i was like i need to get in the ocean just to like cool myself down and i, I couldn't even oh. get in because the this the sargasm was coming in even more and so every wave that comes up it's just like sea like seaweed and i'm like oh, oh it's like hitting it. your body like, i went i actually uh, it was a public beach but no one was around <laughs> and just to make her feel, because she doesn't like when I do this, I totally just whipped off my sweaty clothes. I'd just done everything and just dove in naked. And it, But it was just like all this seaweed like hitting me and I was naked so I felt even more vulnerable. And I was just like, I don't know. It was, um, it, it's, a tough, it's a really tough thing for us because we've seen it every year. We shoot content on beaches worse. and every year yeah. for the last seven, it's getting worse and worse. And, you know, I really don't know what we can do as human beings except really 
cautious and, yeah. and aware of, of our of our impact well, on the earth. I know? think we can support mm-hmm. organizations that are trying to yeah, solve it. Like, because yeah. me on my own, I feel helpless. helpless yeah. But I feel like there's people that are much smarter and much more dedicated and much more at the tip of the spear. Yeah. And actually, in that Instagram post, and if I do post this to YouTube, maybe I'll put the video here, or I'll actually put the the links. Um, there were I, I tagged like eight or nine different or- ocean organizations and mm-hmm. people that are really trying hard to protect our seas because when the seas die and they're dying, it's an it's a game ender. Well, and that's we something die. we don't think yeah. about. We're like, oh yeah, the coral reefs are getting bleached. It's like when the coral reefs die, the sea dies, and when the sea dies, we die. We die. Yeah, because it just disturbs the and, whole. And it may not be in our lifetime, but it sure will be in Xavian's. Yeah. And anyways. It's just, we need to do more to support the people doing stuff. Yeah. And I think that's what this has made us realize. Um, so we're really trying hard to put more energy into talking about it because the first step is just talking about it. It's just bringing awareness and understanding that the reason why so many of us are now not going to be able to enjoy these beautiful places of the world is because of us, is because of our own imprint on the earth. And so we need to... You know, like we were saying, instead of just feeling helpless, like we can't do anything, well, why don't we support those people that have taken upon themselves to try and do something, right? Because we have to do something. We can't just, like, stand back and let the earth die. Because when you see that, you you do see that the earth is sick. You know, it looks like a disease. And you're just like, you know, when you're sick, you're trying to find a cure. You're trying to find a way to heal yourself. And so the best we can do is just join forces as human beings and help those organizations and those people that have dedicated their time and their passion mm-hmm. and help them, you know, do their mission. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyways, I think Mark should put those links because I think all of us should know that these organizations exist and there are people that are, are trying to save our oceans and the sea life and all of the, the ecosystem that is suffering and yeah. uh, hurting right now. So. But on a positive note, Barbados is a dream. It's beautiful. Yeah. The people here, the energy, the weather... The, everything about it has just really it's really comforted us and nurtured us in a time in our life where I think we just needed to as the theme for us this month is in this community we needed to cultivate more peace mm-hmm. inside of ourselves mm-hmm. which when you're more peaceful inside you can learn then how to radiate more beautifully externally um, and so we wanted to theme this talk actually today um, so we that because we are always like, what do we talk about? And rather than just do what we did last month, which was just talk about a whole bunch of, like we asked you guys to answer, ask us questions, so we just talked about questions and, randomly. And we'll do that too, I think, because it's a really nice way for all of us to engage. Mm-hmm. But something that Mark and I were thinking about, um, setting an intention for this live stream today, um, was to talk about an idea that I think all of us think about probably on a daily basis. And that is how do we become the best versions of ourselves in our everyday lives? You know, from, from everything that we do, from the moment we wake up to the, the moment we go to bed, how can we be better? As we talk, we kind of put it into four little parts. I don't know if we'll make it through. We, we, we haven't done something like this in a while. Sometimes we wander off and guys ask us questions. But let's try to, we'll do our best to hold each other to task. Yeah. And maybe um, let's try and keep the question answer portion, which I'll pay attention to. To the specific things that we're discussing as a group here. I think that would be really but cool. But if something is really fitting oh, yeah. and comes up, please, you know, write yeah, in please. the chat, chat and um, we can we talk about it because we do want this to feel inclusive because it's not just Mark and I sitting and talking in front of the phone and all of you guys listening. We mm-hmm. want you, you know, even though you can't speak, you can type and Mark is reading the questions that come through so we hopefully will catch it and we can engage yeah, in like, that sort of way. Like Katarina's mm-hmm. asking, do you have advice for doing yoga during depression slash burnout? Thank you for your Shanti calendar. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I mean, that's what this is about. It's about this conversation is going to be about how to find the best version of yourself because I think... Even in those moments when you are, like you're saying, well, very depressed mm-hmm. or feeling in the moments of burnout... Um, that is like that moment that life gives to you that really challenges you. Like, can you step up and still continue to grow even in a really dark and um, lower place in your life? Well, those moments in the depression that you're speaking about, Katerina, it's those are the moments where finding the dark night of the soul moment to use as the momentum to just roll out your mat and maybe just do yoga for five minutes. Yeah. And it could be just like yin yoga, or it could just be meditation, or it could just be, and recognizing that everything that's going to fight you, that's resisting you to do that, is trying to hold you in that place. 
And even that five minutes is a victory. And then the next mm -hmm. day you try again and you do seven or you do 10 and you do 20. Yeah. Like when I fall out of my practice, the first one back, the first time I try to meditate after a few weeks or a month or whatever it is of not, oh my goodness. It's like, it would be embarrassing if I let it capture that part of my being. But I do my best to hold and say, no, they want me to feel embarrassed, mm -hmm. this energy. This energy wants me to feel like I'm failing. It wants me to feel like it's too difficult. It wants me to stay in the place that I'm in, the resistance. But those little victories, each time a little more, that's the momentum that builds, that we have to cultivate in ourselves to carry us out of the places we are, whether it's a positive place or a negative, and to the next level above. And also something to think about um, in terms of getting into a flow state of mind is really healthy and helpful, especially when I find you're in those dark moments of your life, like depression or burnout. Because when you're in a, that state of being, your mind is constantly living in this vibration, in this state, right? And the best thing we can do is to snap it or to like completely turn it off for a moment. And I find that when you are engaged in something really difficult, like let's say a very intense workout or yoga practice or you're going for a run or anything that you can lose yourself in for that moment or like mark always likes you know when he's feeling burned out go snowboarding right you're when you can engage in an activity that doesn't allow room for your brain to get in the mm -hmm. way because you know if you're doing a sport if you start thinking about something else and you're not in total present awareness you're going to fall and hurt yourself and you can apply that <laughs> to other other activities but i find in those times in our life, the more we can engage in those types of activities, the more endorphins you're releasing, you know, all of these, like, all of the other hormonal chemicals also in your brain releases, it actually allows you to feel better and, and it's more activated, you know, and so I think that's another thing to try, and, and I'm speaking more from the burnout state, because to me, I've, I've never gone through an actual clinical depression, so I don't know what it's like to feel you know, depressed in that way. But what I do know is how I feel when I'm at my lowest state in terms of burnout or exhaustion. And that always helps me um, find that that way is just to find a flow state of mind so I'm not thinking about my burnout, I'm not thinking about how I feel like I'm failing right now because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do because I'm just too tired and not motivated. You know? well, and actually there was a clip we put, it's funny, a lot of things we've been doing creatively have been feed into a lot of this, I think. There was a clip from the podcast with, uh, with Aubrey Marcus. And um, it, was, it was a discussion point about the thing that you're looking at doing that your body or your mind or your depression or your burnout or whatever it is is telling you not to do is almost always the thing that you need to do. Um, and so, and it's, it's recognizing when, you, when, when your mind tells you not to do it to be like, oh, there you are. That's the thing that I need to push through and then to open up to my new, next sort of stage and level. Um, and it's funny because it's like constantly, it's like in yoga, like I've started actively every morning when I'm on my mat, recognizing as I'm doing my flow and I'm always allowing my body to tell me what the next thing is or the signals inside of me and the energy. It's just, it always sort of becomes this very intuitive practice. But when I feel like, oh no, I don't want to do that, I, my mind comes in and says, no, don't do that wide-legged forward fold. Um, or don't sink deeper into it. Now I'm starting to recognize that those are the poses I need to focus on the most. So I've actually come quite a, a distance in just my flexibility and mobility lately because the things I've been avoiding are the things that I've been needing to focus on. And in yoga, it's so apparent. But I think when you take it off the mat, you apply it to life. And you apply it to the aspect of like, like I think Aubrey and us were talking about like running or meditating or like, the thing that it is that you don't want to do at that point, he was saying breath work, like my, oh, my mind won't let me sit down and do breath work. Well, then you better do it. Mm -hmm. It's really important at that point because that's the thing that will carry you to, the, to, to get out of the basement and up that next flight of stairs to, to send all the way up to where you are destined to be. Um, so, I, yeah, it's interesting. You're just sitting there quietly, eh? No, I'm letting you, I'm letting <laughs> you talk. I'm letting you share. Um, oh my but goodness. I think all of this is very um, supportive of the intention that we're, you know, wanting to talk about today and in terms of like how do we become the best versions of ourselves even when we're not feeling like we're at our best place in our life, right? And I think it's always taking every opportunity that we're in and just doing the best we can in that moment. And even if that is very little, what even if that is that five minutes on the map that Mark said, right? Or maybe that is, you know, looking at how we can grow further as human beings. And I think that's been a huge thing in terms of the, the number one way for us to always 
make sure we are moving towards expanding in that in that direction of becoming the best versions of ourselves is that pursuit of growth and looking of ways how can we grow ourselves even if you've reached a really beautiful point in your life you know whether it is you've gone through all of your education and degrees and now you have a beautiful job and you know you you know a career that you've created for yourself well the thing that we should never fall into is coasting so you know like in our society they kind of train us okay you do this and you go to school you get your degree you get a job but then you're like coast but then I think that coasting part is exactly where a lot of people start to feel mm-hmm. one bored too like too comfortable in their life and they start to feel like they need something more some sort of excitement back in their life and the way and again I'm speaking from a personal perspective but um, the way you can bring a little more excitement into your life is through finding ways well how can I grow in what I do even if I've reached that top level in my career how can I be better how can I learn more how can I serve more and it's that's those questions you have to start asking yourself yeah learning serving mm-hmm. and how you know you're at a decent point of your physicality or your practices come to a mm-hmm. point um, or like we're talking at the beginning where you just need to start growing because you feel terrible in life. It's it's the pursuit of what is that next level. Um, and I like what you said there about um, the coasting. It's like the, 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 the idea that when you stop caring for the village, you being the village, the jungle will always take over. So every day you got to wake up, you got to clean the weeds, you got to beat back mm-hmm. the bushes and the palm trees coming in and the vines and the, the paths are encroaching and all that stuff. And that when you stop caring for the village, the jungle always wins. It literally, mm-hmm. it always wins. And we and that's our burnout is always like we stop caring for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, we stop caring for our practice and our well-being and our balance. And we focus because we're so hyper-focused on a program or then, you know, actually it's almost always a program every year, but it's always because we take our eye off taking care of us exactly. and then the jungle always takes over. And so it, it's interesting. And I think part of like this pursuit of growth, you know, Ascension, the program that we put out is it's all about recognizing the limitlessness mm-hmm. of each of us and how if we continue to pursue for our life journey, the next level for ourselves, the, uh, the premise of the program at the end that is revealed is that, um, the ascension is infinite. Like we are all limitless, mm-hmm. and we our potentiality is, is as high as we can push it in the time mm-hmm. that we're gifted by miracle of whatever it is to be here on planet Earth. And and I truly, after this many years on the planet, I believe more than anything, our job here is growth. It is. And and recognizing like, the, because the more you grow and the more you expand, the more you inspire others to expand too. And the more light you shine and the more positivity you bring into this planet and into this world and the more you regress and the more you go inward and hide the more that that lets the darkness overcome the world and your life and everything yeah. and i love what you're saying about that there there is no limit to our possibilities you know we are limitless and i just that quote came in my mind um i don't know if you guys ever heard that quote but it's uh, my soul is not contained within the limits of my body my body is contained within the limitlessness of my soul. And I always, that quote always comes to me when to think about that idea that our, our souls, we are limitless. You know, the things we can achieve, the places we can go in our growth is limitless as long as we allow ourselves to believe that. Belief. Right? And that's, that's easy to believe that, well, that's, that's not for me or well, I could never do that. It's like, well, why couldn't you? You know, we all have the same amount of hours in the day. And does it make other people special? Sure, some people have some things that, like, you know, financial or other opportunities that are a little bit greater than others, but that shouldn't stop you but, in the terms of your personal And growth. every person, right. even if you see them and you're like, well, they have mm-hmm. this advantage, but every person has <laughs> obstacles personally yeah. that they have to overcome to get to that next level for themselves. Exactly. So, sure, some people have natural advantages and some people don't. But that, the, the, the playing field is always equal, mm-hmm. whether it's about getting healthy whether it's about you know optimizing your yourself or your being or contributing more to society or achieving some goals or expanding into new places and i think that's like it's telling because like for us we've been doing boho with you guys for so long that's i think single-handedly the reason 
like we started our podcast mm -hmm. because we we recognized we needed some kind of other way to grow ourselves and also our brand right like we couldn't just continue to stay in one lane in terms of just making yoga videos which we're doing and it's wonderful and mm -hmm. we love it but it's you know what else can we do how else can we challenge ourselves because starting a podcast is really challenging oh my God. and it's you know it's terrifying it's, it's challenging yeah. it's and you're difficult putting, it's... and you're putting yourself out there in a different way right because a lot of people i find especially when you're a yoga teacher they you know they put you in a box and they're like well you're the yoga teacher and you, you know teach people how to find peace and asana work and you know you say a couple of things and that's it and then you put yourself in an environment where you can speak your heart and your mind and what resonates with you or what you agree or disagree with in the world and that's your truth like that mm -hmm. is your authentic self but not everybody is going to agree with that or like that or you know have whatever their opinions about it and that's again that for us that was a challenge to step forward in our own authenticity you mm -hmm. know? And, and that's scary <laughs> it's so scary to do that oh it was, you know it was yeah. yeah putting beginning it and continuing it it's never and it's not easy it's like it's brought us back to learning about loving the process of creativity mm -hmm. and like not allowing it to stale in a way that it becomes laborious or work where it's brought us back to the idea where it's thrilling and it's terrifying and it's difficult and it's very little, like there's very little coming back to con allow you to continue, but just simple little bits of feedback. It brings us back to the beginning of Bold Beautiful. Um, so Stars and Destruct for us it has been like a huge thing for us in the present. But even as we're doing this and putting so much energy into it with the team, we're still looking and saying like, well, what's next after that like constantly like you said like not coasting not that we're coasting to any degree but saying like you know what is the next step what is the next inspiration what is the next passion of ours like what makes us feel more excited what is going to be challenging you know all of those questions and then asking ourselves that and looking well what are the next steps for me to follow that path mm -hmm. i mean yeah and, and i mean it's funny you've been driving to the beach yesterday like we spent the hour driving across barbados to um, where do we go yesterday? To Bottom Bay or Harrismith? Harrismith yeah, Beach, yeah. where Juliana was like, "I want to expand my knowledge base." And and um, yeah, and it's because it's just coming from different inspirations in life. But I'm actually planning to go into another deeper training come the fall because there's a, a training that I found that I want to enroll in, and um, it's going to be really intense, you know. But again, it's it's challenging, and it will. Um, you know, take me on a path that right now I'm feeling inspired to follow and serve through. Is it a secret? What? <laughs> well, you're like being very cryptic. It's like it's challenging and it's difficult. Like, no, it's not. I mean, it's going to be <laughs> challenging in its ways, but um, I've been really inspired to. I don't like to talk about it too much because I find that when you haven't no, that's fair. done something, talking about it. Then let's not talk about it. I didn't much, mean to put you like, on the spot. Um, you know? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. We we live by that a lot. And I apologize for putting on the spot. Mm -hmm. But we find when we set out to do things, like when we, like, the hardest, it becomes more difficult and more likely not to have the universe um, connect all the right dots in the process because mm -hmm. it really takes a surrender to just whatever that process becomes. But when you mention it, when you speak about the things it tends to make them harder or not happen. Like when, especially when good things might happen, oh, this person said they might do this for me. And then you kind of like lean back and you wait for that person to do something. You're like, oh, I'm going to go do this. Or, you know, it's a funny thing, but like speaking the words can sometimes, sometimes speaking the words to yourself has a really empower, like it always has a very has to. empowering, yeah. like um, catapult it's towards what you need to do. But speaking them to others can sometimes take the legs out. It's almost like talking about something you've achieved before you've actually achieved it, and then it takes you away from the process and just makes you focus on the destination. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of how we see things. It's like, I can't wait to share about the, the passion inspiration that is really taking me on, but until I am fully enrolled and immersed in it, I, you know, yeah, let yeah. it unfold. I don't think, um, yeah, let it just be in the heart. That's now. beautiful. That's really, really um, beautiful. But I think... Another part of, you know, something we were talking about in terms of uh, becoming the best version of ourselves is the idea of becoming totally okay with failure, the idea of what failure is. Because, again, I think we've been taught in our society that 
the idea of failing at something makes you feel less than others or that you're not, you know what I mean? Redefining yeah. failure. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because I think, yeah, we're taught in a society that like failures are game menders. Like it stops you in your tracks. Like it, it means you're not meant to do something when in actuality. It's a test of the universe to ask you how badly do you want to do this. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. and the process is only mastered and is only found through falling in the process mm -hmm. of getting back up, brushing yourself off and being like, no, no, that's just actually not a failure. That's my lesson in the, whatever that was. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like, it's so overlooked. It's like, you think about, you know, like Thomas Edison before he invented the light bulb, 10,000 experiments to get one. And like most people can't try something six times. Like for us, it's like, we continually get back on the horse for Spanish, trying to learn our Spanish and trying to make it a priority and then other priorities but come in. So many other things are in our life. Exactly, yeah. but we recognize, well, it's not time for that, but it's mm -hmm. still gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Like we haven't given up because we keep falling away two months in. You know, we recognize that that is part of the process and when we make it a priority, it will happen. Just like with the podcast, the wheels fell off the podcast. Like we lost yeah. people on our team, things were falling apart. We were catching, you know, a weekly episode thing happening and then we just couldn't do it anymore. And we were faced, like, looking at it, being like... Was this a failure? Is this, like, did we just okay. fail? And, like, should we just burn the hard drives? And we actually, like, we almost did. We had to remind ourselves that, no, that's... Now we're making a tighter team. We're becoming more efficient. Everything we're learning mm -hmm. through this process is going to help us be stronger and better at it as we go. <laughs> yeah. Right? And... <laughs> no, so I was, I'm just seeing like, no, a couple see comments that. coming. Through. I know you guys are, there's been a few comments coming up about Boho Beautiful Yoga Retreats. Um, and if some, that's something we would want to do. And for sure, I think one day, um, just one baby step at a time. Yeah, Not no, right again, now, it's, it's funny. We talk about yeah. when it becomes a, that time, that time, right? Yeah. To recognize Because it. that's another thing is being able to connect with people on a, on a more personal, physical level is also, I think, something that we're seeing kind of in, in the future point. Especially, like, for me, I feel very um, excited when I start to think about that as is, is being able to, to work and deepen um, that relationship of, of healing and, and love mm -hmm. and connection with other human beings. Not that this isn't great. This no. is wonderful. We all get to connect online, but it's different when you're here, you know, versus when you have people around you. So to all of you guys that are curious, of course, like, one day for sure, um, this won't be this year, uh, just too much going on in our life, but... Hopefully, It'll maybe, happen hopefully like maybe to. next year for sure. And of course, you guys will know, be the first ones to know. But human um, interaction. It's so funny that I have to we, say that. Yeah, human interaction. It, there's no replacing it. No digital um, medium mm -hmm. could ever be the same as like when we run into one of you guys. Yeah. And we're able to just like talk. Like, oh, um, like yesterday right. on the beach, we're on like, yes, like a girl abandoned beach. This woman came through with a tour mm -hmm. and her friend, like mm -hmm. with a guide. And they went and they took some photos at one end of the beach. They're super polite and didn't come into our frame, which is very rare. Oh, yeah. People love to just, like, make a point of walking through our frame. Um, and then they came up and they're like, excuse me, are you, are you guys dumb? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was, like, I was like hiding under a blanket under the shade. And I, like, peeked out. And I was like, yes, we're taking, you know, Juliana's resetting up the mat or something. And, yeah, she was she just wanted to introduce herself and say, like, hey, I do your programs. Yeah. And it was so, it was so special. It was really special to meet people like that in person. So, mm -hmm. anyway, sorry, I just, I just kept seeing the question, so I, I needed to, yeah, um, to respond to that. Um, but, yeah, so I guess, sorry, I'm trying to keep us on track here. But um, the idea of failure is important to recognize that whenever we um, decide in engaging in a passion or a direction or a challenge, always remembering that you define what failure is to you, right? Like whatever, whatever happens that is labeled a fail, it's really up to you to decide where is this the end of the road or is this just an obstacle that I'm going to learn from and grow from and then use that to be even better. And, you know, the universe doesn't bring you anything without a purpose. So if there is something that was brought to you that ended something that or caused an obstacle, you know, it's up to us to see it from that perspective and to be like, this is just, it's for my own growing. Well, know? and that's really interesting because I think like yoga has taught me that more than, that might be the, the number one, right, there's a lot of number one lessons yoga has taught me <laughs> at this point, but one of the strongest is that because our practice has been so intermittent, you know, mm -hmm. and we fall away from it just as much as we come back to it, it's almost like the breaking of the habit and the breaking of the ritual strengthens the faith in the need for it. So every time I fall away from 
something that I've implemented in my life. We'll use yoga as an example. That's the faith to know that when I start to feel just terrible and my mind and my anxiety is out of control and I'm not able to focus anymore, and I go, oh, and first I recognize, I'm like, well, I stopped doing yoga because of this and this and this. And, you know, there's always a million reasons and they're all valid. But now there's this turning point, this moment that you can define for yourself if coming back to it will be of value. And the more you fall away and come back to it, the more the faith exists that you just know, of course, if I come back to yoga, everything is going to just, fl- and the first practices are going to be hell and they're going to be frustrating and you're going to think that, you know, it's not for me anymore, whatever it might be. But when you come back to it, everything will, will balance and align perfectly as it should. And then you recognize that that moment of falling away is just to strengthen that faith in the practice and that passion and devotion towards it. And, and it's almost like it is yoga, falling away from it and coming back. Mm-hmm. Like that is the practice. Um, in so far, when I've, we've been doing it for like 10 years now, you just recognize that like, just what value it actually brings. So the failure towards not being consistent 365 days a year is actually part of the practice. Exactly. And I think that ties in really well into the third component that we feel is really of the, the, the self-growth that we have to constantly thinking about and becoming the best versions of ourselves. And that is that self-awareness, right? Like everything you're saying right now yeah. has a lot to do with that self-awareness. Self-awareness of understanding like when you fail and the, re- the, the renewal that you have to take through that self-awareness to like go through what happened to understand where can I be better and that renewal process actually sets you on that new course that you have to be on um, and then also the self-awareness I think that allows us to feel that we are failing is the <laughs> the insanity of our modern day society of yeah. social media Right? It's because you're working on something and then you, or you're trying to become a better version of yourself physically. You're working out every day and then you log on to Instagram and you're just being fed, let's just say, some models or something. And it's so easy for you to fall into that side of comparison and comparing your life, comparing yourself, comparing your journey and your growth to this point to that other person's journey. And that's that is the worst thing you can do because honestly all of us are on our own paths we're all exactly where we're supposed to be yeah and social media shows you the highlight reel and you have to always remember that because it's so easy to fall into that trap of comparison thinking that oh well you know i'm just not as good at or my life isn't as good at these people's or whatever it is but you have no idea what happens behind the closed doors of everybody's lives and everybody's journeys and we all struggle we all go through Victories and failures, and so it, looking at social media is the, the worst thing you can do to well, yourself. Social media is a mirror. Literally, everything we see yeah. in life is a mirror. Every movie, once you start recognizing that, like when you watch movies, you see yourself in characters you like, and you see the parts of yourself that you don't like, and the villains that you see, mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff, and the things you're most emotionally attached to, negative or positive, always seem to resonate somewhere inside. Mm-hmm. But in social media, works in this way where it's actually playing on the fact that everything you see you then compare to yourself which makes your brain chemically react, which Mm -hmm. makes all these little loops that you get addicted to. And there's so many people much more wise Mm -hmm. and way better spoken than myself that I've sort of listened to on my path Mm -hmm. that have said in, to just paraphrase it, I guess, is that the only person we should ever compare ourselves to is the person we were yesterday. And that's bar none. Mm -hmm. And if we can live by that, and eliminate the comparison and catch ourselves when we do it with that self-awareness you're speaking of, um, where we only become that much more healthier and vibrant and better and more well-adjusted to attune each day to who we were yesterday and make slight adjustments on how to just be that little bit better. And it's also having that self-awareness when you do catch yourself falling into the hole, the rabbit hole of social media, because I'm sure it's happened to all of us, right? Because... What I've also noticed, for example, you know, recently we, Mark and I, we got our our own Instagram accounts. Actually, somebody was just asking about that. I was going to throw it over to the Mm -hmm. questions, but Joanne Coe was saying, how does it feel to be back on social media? Media, Curious how you're protecting your mental and physical health and keeping the balance. Well, so for me, for example, um, when we launched our personal social medias, one of the first things is I was really careful of who I follow on social media, right? So I chose to follow things that actually would allow me to grow so it would be some like Ram Dass or like different yogic um, philosophers or teachers you know and then obviously a couple of friends and things like that but um, not filling my Instagram feed with 
things that would distract me. But the funny thing, this is the crazy part, and I've noticed that from whenever I log in to like the, the Instagram feed, Instagram pushes things at you that you don't even follow. Mm -hmm. So it all of a sudden, like, why are these like Hollywood can... things at me? Like these whatever actors, and I don't follow any of these people. Why am I being fed all these different things that I didn't subscribe to? And Instagram can do that. And that's really interesting of this trap of social media is that even when you do your best to kind of like filter what you see, unless maybe you follow zero people, and I've seen some people do that too, where they no, follow no, no one. But they still have a feed in Instagram. That's true. So and so the, so the Instagram has, so you have to just be so careful and so self-aware that even if you try and you do fall into this like hole of looking at other people's lives and comparing yourselves, to get yourself out of there. It's like swim out, swim out, you know what I mean? Like don't get trapped because it's so easy. These social media devices and these platforms, they have been designed to, and I think it's been scientifically proven. Oh, no. Like they, they brainwash our brains. Yeah, it's, you know what I mean? it's, like, it's you're manipulation. Like, you know, you're in this thing. And, and I'm sure all of us have caught it. Sometimes you're like, I spent half an hour Oh, on my social media, like, I was zombied they're, they're out. They're designed oh. to suck the minutes out of our yeah. life. Actually, I saw yesterday the state of Utah, because it's so recognized at this point, just made it and passed a law into into motion mm -hmm. that anyone under 18 has to have parental uh, approval to be on Instagram, Facebook, yeah, or TikTok. Yeah. Because now they're recognizing the negative impact in children, which is funny, but the negative impact in us as adults, mm -hmm. too. Like, we recognize well, it makes it. us crazy. And it does. Like, so it's funny we're talking about this because the self-awareness is so key. When yeah. As soon as we got these... You know, I actually did something similar. I got rid of... I had an old account, and I got rid of everyone I followed. And, I, and it, it was unarbitrary, which I think might have offended some people in my life, which I'm sorry. I actually am because I did it just... I didn't want to spend seven hours going through a whole bunch of thousand people I followed and picking out the people, but I wanted to start fresh to try to maintain what Juliana's speaking about. Um, and then now, you know, it's funny, like, I'm, I have an OCD brain, so, you know, when we're dealing with so much social media now, I'm constantly, like, my brain wants to think about things too much, um, and I made a huge mistake, which is good for self-awareness. With my social media, my friend post sent me this thing on Telegram or something about, like, the moon landing being a hoax, which is a whole other discussion. Like, the, this is so crazy that it's going there. So, but the moon landing being a hoax, which there are a lot of arguments for and against, and there's a lot of people that are very, with polarized opinions, that love, I've learned, to argue about this to the end of the, of the road. Where I find it just, I find conspiracy theories incredibly tantalizing to, like, to play with and to be like, what if? Oh, why do they say that? And, like, investigating everything from a Socratic standpoint. Um, but the thing that he sent me, I was like, I'm going to throw this up on Instagram and just see what happens. And it, it turned out it started all kinds of trauma on my personal account. Like, I just watched all these people just going nuts on each other and going nuts on me. Because it was saying that, like, I don't want to get into what it was saying, but it turned out that someone pointed out that it was actually a doctored video. That I, But there's lots of things on, that aren't doctored. The point of the story. The point of the, story <laughs> <laughs> the point of the story was that I recognized it was false, and I had to use self-awareness to admit that it was a mistake and take it down. But it also made me recognize that in pursuit of growth, we have to be open. And we have to be self-aware to the, to the points of conversation and ideas and ideologies that make us react emotionally rather than with an openness to not just, you don't have to consider everything to be true, but you have to consider that other people might believe that and accept their position in a way where having a conversation, whether it's a conversation with yourself on a self-belief that you believe is true and challenging it, or whether it's something that we don't agree on and being like, let's throw our emotions and all of these, like, these things that make us stop listening aside. And let's just be open and forgiving. Because, like, if someone's going to think that I adamantly believe that the moon landing is a hoax, which I often do and often don't sometimes, but if they're going to see that in me and turn their back on me because of it, that's crazy. Like, that's just such a closed, like, even if, it, especially if you know them, if it's just someone who's following you, that's one thing. But if you know them personally and they're going to get so upset that you, that you may believe something that they for some reason, feel so passionate that they don't, they're, they're just going to cut you off for the rest of their life. I mean, good for them. I don't want to be in their life. But at the same time, it's like, it's amazing to recognize that I see that. I'm like, well, I need to be more open. I need to be more aware. I need to be, I need to listen more and speak less. And that's, again, it's about becoming our, our, our intention here, the best version of us, mm -hmm. right? 
It's about becoming what what is it in front of us that we need to we need to work on and recognizing what those things are. And I mean, right off the bat, it made me work on before I post something, I need to check the validity of it, hundred percent. But on the other side, it made me recognize that I see all these people reacting that way, and I need to recognize in myself when I react that way too. Well, especially these days, I find that people are very, very sensitive and very triggered because of the last three years, really, of intensity that we've all lived through. And as we all know, we don't really need to talk about but we are in a, a very polarized, divided time right now, you know, and I think as soon as you speak about certain things, conspiracy theories, you can, for example, that triggers people, um, it's, it's one thing it triggers them, but it's like there's like this energy that needs to be released and I think that's why you also experience people like explode like oh, yeah. emotionally on, or over social media or you know what I mean like irrationally um, whereas it's okay to have your opinions and your thoughts oh, but you don't need to be insulting or hurting others because they posted something that triggered you you know and I think again that comes from that self-awareness like, understanding matters. that we all ha- may have different views but it doesn't matter in the end because we're still on this rock spinning in space, all trying to survive and our oceans are dying. Yeah. You know, why do There's we really real care? Things. There's real things that are happening like that are going to impact all of our lives. You know, so all of this stuff, it's like, meh, just like. I care about the oceans dying. Sure, I have fun with the idea that we didn't land on the moon. 100%. I think that's a fascinating thing. And it should be considered because if it's true that we didn't land on the moon, then a lying government that propagates these messages and narratives, that's a huge issue too because they're in I control think we know of that things like our oceans. There's a lot of lies in the well, government that and we that's all are what, aware of. Right? That's, so, yeah. that's what's so fascinating. It was the 60s. Like, yeah. It was the most secretive and deception, deceptive time that the mm-hmm. American government ever existed in that we know about now. I'm sure it's the same still today. But now it's all been like outed, except for JFK. Um, but it's literally all been outed how mm-hmm. manipulative and, and gross their conduct was in that era um, of holding on to power because there's so much social change. Mm-hmm. So everything's on the table to discuss. Um, but I think the oceans matter a little bit more, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Making a value hierarchy, I think that's important. No, exactly. And it's so easy to become distracted by these little things. You know, it's like kind of you watch how the media works, and, and I find that really interesting. You know, there'll be like a war happening or, you know, animals are dying and suffering for example is something that i've been really trying to deal with a lot in ukraine right now like real issues that impact people and, and and their um experience of life and then there's the oscars and everyone's like oh but what about the oscars you know what i mean it's really easy for like the media to be like what they push at us it's like who cares that there's a bunch of celebrities and hollywood people sitting at a dinner table saying this is the best movie that one of the year like okay maybe that's just not on my priority or level of like even caring but it's funny how the media and and the social media and the mainstream media like we focus a lot about yeah. these things it's in a form of distractions it's all distractions it's all distractions and and there's like how come there hasn't been a lot of coverage about the sargasms of the seaweed we sell one thing online you yeah, know what i mean yeah one thing like but this is actually affecting our entire planet how about like the climate change issues like the rainforest burning down like all of the things i mean we could keep going with the terrible things how about Again, like the the insane issue right now with what's happening in Ukraine, and not just the people that are suffering and the innocent people that are having to cope with the um, reality of war that they're in the middle dealing with, um, but even like the innocent animals. You know what I mean? Right now, they have such an issue with animals literally taking over little towns and not just animals, mostly dogs and cats. Dogs and cats and. Because breeding. they're just breeding. And breeding, 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 none of breeding, them are breeding. sterilized, and so there's all this explosion of puppies. And there's, you know, some organizations, and I talked about in our last um, live stream, which are incredible, that I, I even posted about it on Instagram yesterday as well, and I please ask any of you guys to go and check them out and donate. Um, they're called Save the dogs.eu um, and so they're this incredible organization of people that have just taken upon themselves and they actually send volunteers on a weekly basis from Romania and they go into these eastern parts of Ukraine and they're just feeding the dogs they're like they can't because you can't actually even take the dogs out of the country something that we were looking into last week and learned that it's the rules right now are insane that you can't actually rescue the dogs out of the country um, so these people are just going and, and that's that's their thing is they're caring for these this life, these innocent beings that are just having to suffer because of all of this human conflict that's going on. So it's like, to me, when I see that, I'm like, that's the real problem. That's not about who lost the Oscars. Like, that's the problem of the world. 
you know, the animals that depended on us and we've let them down. And well, now, you know, like, not to get so negative, no, no, um, no, it's, but it's just like, I think that what starts to really bother me is when I start to see what is really being fed to us through the mainstream media, through the social media, that like, imagine if we switched a bit and we actually started to talk about and bring awareness to people like these organizations, just for example, I'm sure there's many other organizations out there that are not just helping animals, but people or children and orphans and, you know, mm -hmm. like I could keep going, right? Well, where you spend your attention is where your energy goes and the more energy that goes to certain things, the more power it gets. And, you know, in a society where 90% of the people seem to care about the Oscars more than they do a lot of the social issues that are going on in the world that are actually jeopardizing the future of the planet and all of us mm -hmm. and our healthy, and our ability to be healthy and vibrant and, and the best beings that we can be walking this planet, mm -hmm. the more that's the way, the direction that the planet shifts, right? Um, but look at, like, you know, whenever, the, whenever there has been, like, oh, all of a sudden people care about something and attention goes to it, like when there's a crisis, like usually it becomes like kind of a fad or like a social... Well, everyone like, changes their Instagram photos to a flag or something. Yeah, right? but like when that like happens, that, yeah. the good side of that, other yeah. than the social virtue side of it, the good side of it is all of a sudden so much energy goes there that it actually makes a difference. Yeah. Because attention, all of ours individually, is so powerful. Because where we put our attention on a day-to-day -day basis, we'll then change ourselves. And where we as collective society put our attention on a day-to-day -day basis, will change and affect that. And I think maybe that's sort of the premise of this entire becoming the best version of ourselves, is where you put your attention is mm -hmm. what's going to actually matter and change in your life. Mm -hmm. And if you put your attention on being the best version of yourself, there's no possible way you will not be better every day, even if it's just incrementally. Exactly. Um, and that's, you know... Maybe we can round that up and head to questions in a second. Yeah. But I think that's like, that's really conscious awareness and attention. That's everything. It's our power individually. Yeah, I love what Trisha here just said, where attention goes, energy flows. Oh, that's exactly. beautiful. That's yeah. amazing. That's where you, you direct. So You're energetic. And we have a choice every single day. Each one of us, every single day, we have a choice where to put our attention. Whether it's how we focus it on social media, how we focus it on our families, on our loved ones, or how we focus on ourselves or our communities abroad. That's everything. That mm -hmm. literally becomes the pivotal choice of your life every single day is where that attention goes. And I think that's where it came from for us. We recognize that it's our, our mantra. Your decisions today will define your tomorrow. And the minute we started making better decisions today, our tomorrow got better and better and better. And we continue to live with that mantra every single day. And that is truly the skeleton key to unlocking the best version of yourself. 100%. You know what I mean? Do you want to throw some questions? Yeah, let's do it. Um, oh my goodness. I saw some wonderful comments coming through just kind of talking about the uh, the topics that we're saying here. But Movie or book recommendations? Let's lighten it up. From <laughs> Alexander Ritona. <laughs> what a, um, I started reading a Rick Rubin book called The Creative Way that he just put out. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a for anyone who's creative. I once read a book called The Artist Way, mm -hmm. and that changed the scope of creativity for us, probably for the rest of our life. And now Rick Rubin, he's this incredible record producer, put out this book, um, and it's beautiful. If you want to get into, not even if you want to get, if, you, if there's anything in your life that you do with creativity, and we all do stuff with creativity, it, can, it, brings, it brings you to a place to understand it on many levels, where he wrote the book and he said, you can take or leave anything written in this book. Mm -hmm. But you'll find that there might be some nuggets that are finding their way to you because this is exactly the moment you're here to read them. Um, and I found, yeah, I'm burning through it pretty quick. It's really yeah, beautiful. You are. I've been slowly working my way through um, a book right now called The Calling by Rasha, R-A-C-H-A. -A. Um, she's this amazing author that also wrote this book called Oneness. And um, it's amazing. And she's um, a person that she just had this gift of channeling this information from other dimensions, um, other planets, you know, whatever you want to call it, other universes, and the messaging that she channeled are insanely powerful. Um, and this was book written like way before, like in the 50s or 60s, I believe. So anyways, um, that's something that I've been working through. And then I'm also looking at another recommendation that's on my end, because I always feel like I'm pulled towards the more like esoteric, spiritual, um, 
you know, the woo-woo stuff that people would label. <laughs> but uh, another book right here in front of us right now is... Which is uh, our tripod. <laughs> our is tripod a, is a stack of books we can go through, actually. We can, no, but uh, it's The Journey of Souls by Michael Newton. And Michael Newton is a hypnotherapist and also a therapist. And he wrote this amazing book because he's helped um, do a lot of past life regressions with clients. And the most incredible thing is that he put all of these clients' um, experiences of what it would be like for them to die in their last life and when you read each person's example it's it's incredibly beautiful because everyone has a very similar um experience of seeing what they saw and in terms of our our soul connections our soul families our soul clusters and all of those ideas it's it's really beautiful and it's it's a lot to do about death but I think it's beautiful because it allows you to just explore that idea that death isn't something that we fear as if it's the end of anything. It's just mm-hmm. a transitionary time for our souls. And when you see how he's able to heal these people, and maybe some of you guys have done past life regression, but he's able to take them back to a different life and they can heal a wound and then come back to this life and they actually find healing in this life. It's like that, um, that karmic uh in, interaction I guess between yeah. our, our lives and anyways it's it's a really beautiful book as well so so say the names again some people are asking yeah it's the calling by rasha r-a-c-h-a maybe you can rasha Ra- or rasha. s-h s-h rasha. S-H, S-H. yeah okay yeah yeah so rasha and then journey of souls by michael newton and i mm-hmm. mentioned the creative act by rick rubin and we'll put links and reference it in the repost of this on mm-hmm. the app because we'll take it down for a bit and then process it through and put it up again. We'll, I'll try to remember to put mm-hmm. that in the in the notes. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are just some books that we're reading. Yeah, but if you guys yeah. want to share some books that you're reading totally. right now, please share. I think for everybody here, because it's always great to know um, what is out there, what is inspiring you, right? It's um, it's important to share. It's important them. for sure. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, yeah, when somebody recommends something to you, when especially when you don't ask for it. Sometimes that's exactly the way the yeah. universe is delivering it to you because you need it. Oh my gosh, so we just saw a comment. Alexandra Ritona says, have you seen the animated film or read The Boy, The Horse, The Fox, and The Mole? Oh my god. I can tell you that that is Xavier's favorite movie. Well, it's his only movie. It's the only movie he's, he's seen. ever seen. It's, it's the, the only, only show movie we've movies. ever allowed him to see. But we wa- let him watch, and he watched the whole 45 minutes for a toddler. I'm sure a lot of you guys know. It's the only like, thing he's ever done for 45 minutes in his like life straight, so far. Which I think it's a half hour. No, it's 45 Oh, is it 45? It's 45 minutes. It's this beautiful animated film um, that I would highly recommend all of you guys watch it and your children should watch it because it's so beautiful. But We watched um, it by chance once, just like we were like, oh, let's try yeah. this because it looked, it, it looked like an old Winnie the Pooh mm-hmm. animation, like actual yeah. animated movie, not computer generated. And I think we have this like really strange affinity towards movies that are hand-drawn versus computer-drawn. So we're like, mm-hmm. let's watch this. And then we put it on and we were both in tears. Like, we were both cried multiple it's, times it's in this half an hour. It's just got such beautiful messaging. Um, and the children connect to it, too. Like, yeah. the other day, not the other day, like, over Christmas uh, time, we were staying at my mom's house in Airdrie, Alberta, and my brother's two kids were there. And so all the cousins, you know, they cuddled on the couch, and we put this movie on. And it was the first time that my brother's eldest daughter, who's seven, seen it. She was so touched by it because this is the first time she's seen anything like this that um, we actually ordered a book for Xavier as a gift because that's his favorite movie. We ended up giving that book to her because she was like it, it, it connected something in her and it was so beautiful to see for a seven-year-old girl to be like impacted by a film like this. But the messaging of this movie is, or film is so beautiful. Um, okay, you're Xavier going nuts in there. Yeah. We've got to wrap this up soon. But mm-hmm. the, the, the kicker to all this is now when you ask Xavier what he wants to be when he grows up, we're like, Xavier, yeah. what do you want to be when you grow up? And he, he goes, goes be kind. Right. And it's so sweet. Like, oh my goodness. But that's the kind of messaging that this film is. I think all children should watch it because oh, yeah. it's just beautiful way to like to show them this is how we should be and kind and, and loving you know anyways so you guys should watch the movie maybe we'll put a link to it yeah. yeah it's on apple tv i believe right yeah it's on apple TV. i actually <laughs> just i found it on a torrent after yeah. so now i have it like I, I don't really it doesn't matter i ripped it off a torrent um and i put it in a dropbox link and now all my friends like when they're like this comes up like what are you watching these days or anything like that i'm like i send them the dropbox yeah. link to it and i don't really tell them a lot about it and i remember mm-hmm. jordan who is um, who you might some of you might know because he runs a whole side of the Boho Beautiful business, the customer interaction and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Did he watch it? Yeah, I sent it to him and to his wife, and then he wrote me back. He's like, "Thanks a lot, bro. You could have warned us we were going to end up in tears immediately." <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and I was just like, it's so sweet. But it's good tears. Yeah, it's good yeah. tears. Oh, it's like healthy, like the kind that help you grow. Yeah. The, high, yeah. the kind that put you in touch. That's, that's the movie of the year for movie us. Movie of the year right? for us. There you go. If we had an Oscars, right? I think you did win an Oscar, though. Oh, but I remember you told me you were like, oh, yeah, this movie actually won something. I was like, well, that's cool. Thank God for them, I guess. Yeah. So, oh, mm -hmm. and so what else? I don't know. I, I think, um, yes, it would be strange. Um, I'm just kind of mm -hmm. trying to catch up on this. Yeah, there's some really great recommendations, like Brett Nord, The Path of the Yoga yeah. Sutras. Actually, I think I have that you book have on that my book. nightstand. <laughs> too. Weird. Yeah. That's totally crazy. Yeah. Nice one, Brett. The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. Michael Singer is amazing. Actually, it's another amazing, um, uh, amazing, amazing author. Uh, Alberto Vivera said, what was the movie called? The movie's called, I always get the order wrong, Mark. Well, think about the way that it comes the through. The boy first, the then the fox, or then no, the, mole, the mole, then the fox, fox and the and horse. The horse. Mm -hmm. So when we ask Xavier, and he just goes, the boy... Fox, mole, <laughs> horse, boy, fox, mole, and he just keeps going in a loop. It's really cute. He's the best. Oh my goodness. I could talk about him forever. Um, what else is going on here? Oh, Anna's saying, I text a lot with Jordan when I got a valve inside my package from Boho. A valve? A valve. That's weird. I hope he helped you out with that. I don't even understand what that is. Anyways, I hear him. He's going crazy. We're coming right up to an hour. This is yeah. a beautiful moment, I think, to say thank you to you guys. Yeah, it's been. A, it's always such a a gift for us to take time um, on a weekend and connect with all of you guys, all of your communities, and all of you wonderful, wonderful people that are part of this journey of ours. So thank you guys. Thank those, you for those, being here. Those mm -hmm. of you that are here right now, yes, thank you. And yeah. for those of you that are watching this on when we repost it on the app, because I know it's impossible YouTube. to hit no on the oh, app. On the app, the app it's too, impossible yeah. for everybody to hit a time when yeah. everybody can be here. You know, we're thank you guys too. And if it does go on YouTube and it's been a really nice conversation, maybe we'll put it on YouTube. Um if you guys you know boho.tv, join the community, be a part of things like this. It's so special. Um and uh yeah I don't know. We're just, just deeply grateful. For this, for this moment, right now, in this present moment here. Amazing, guys. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's everything you're sharing is um, it is yeah exactly how it comes from our hearts, and we're always thankful for you guys. And we have a lot of new content for you. We've been shooting nonstop here in the last few days, so, um, and actually got a lot of all of your recommendations. One of our wonderful um, team members, Michaela, she oh, made yeah. us a beautiful like sheet that took all of your recommendations from our last live stream. No, for the last check-in. Th sorry, the last check-in, check right. Um, for all the kind of classes that you want us to make. And so we've been using that as our guide to create new content for you guys. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that you've been requesting coming your way. So stay tuned. Stay for tuned. That. But yeah. uh, thank you guys so much. All of our love to you. Have a beautiful weekend, wherever you are. Have a beautiful week. And um, we'll see you next month. Amazing. Love and night, guys. Love and night. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>